What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm finally better enough to be able to talk into the microphone again. I've had a whole week of just having this horrendous cough and cold. Can probably still hear it in my voice a little bit, but I am feeling a lot better so I can actually sit down and make some content for you guys. So there's a lot of stuff that's happened in the kind of gap between me uploading actually, which I'll do another video on this week. I'll do a whole kind of catch up with the channel. This will be part of that catch up actually and it's about me releasing a new little beat tape. So I've put something up on SoundCloud last night. It was kind of unannounced to be honest. I kind of just sat down and just drilled it out and then decided screw it I'm just going to upload it. It's not the best piece of work that's ever going to exist but it was fun to make and that will also be going on Spotify as well this one. I decided I'm going to put that on Spotify so I'll let you know when that's live there and you can listen to it. So as usual if you've been following the channel for a while you'll know that every time I kind of do a beat tape I do a video explaining how I made it. So that's what this video is about today. And as you can see in front of me, I've got the Boss SP202 and the brand new SP404 Mark II, which obviously a lot of you are struggling to get hold of at the moment, which is really, really annoying. I'm lucky enough to have one, so I decided to use it for this beat tape. So I'm going to go through some of the features that are used, and some of them will probably be a bit of a surprise in terms of the fact that I haven't used some of the features, but... I don't think it's too much to read into really, it's just the kind of workflow that I ended up using. It wasn't really that thought out, it just kind of happened to uh, end up working that way. So this is not any sort of criticism of the features on this unit. I haven't purposely not used them, but I will explain why I use them. So first things first, what did I use the 202 for? Well, I just love the grit of this box. It's just unbelievable the grit you can get on it from the different sample rates that we've got down here. I've talked about these a lot before on the channel. For those of you that don't know, or don't own a 202, you can record into the device with different sample rates. So you start with Hi-Fi, you've got standard, Lo-Fi 1 and Lo-Fi 2. Now Lo-Fi 2 is pretty much unusable, I'd say. Lo-Fi 1 can work with samples, but you do tend to have to do a little bit of EQ because it can sound quite harsh. Standard is good with a little bit of EQ. Hi-Fi, if you're gonna be using Hi-Fi, there's not really much point in getting this box out, to be honest. So I tended to use standard and Lo-Fi, and what I was doing is recording in about 20 to 30 seconds worth, you get a maximum of about 32 seconds on this unit. It does vary, but that's roughly about how much you get. I would record a chunk of a song into this on whatever sample rate I was choosing. Once I'd done that, I could have gone ahead and used the pitch on here, but the pitch on the SP404 Mark II is actually pretty decent now. At first I did do that with this unit. As I sort of got a couple of beats in, I uh, decided to just leave that to this unit instead, just because it's a bit faster and it's a bit cleaner as well. So I would record a chunk into there, and then by simply connecting this with the cable, uh, it's really easy to do. Well, as you can see here, you've got line out. That's just a phono output. So phono to jack. The Mark II has ditched the phono inputs and now has single jack inputs. So this is all tangled up with various stuff in the studio, but this is the kind of cable you'll need. So you've got phono at one end here, which will go into the back of the 202 in the line out, and these two will go into the back of the 404 Mark II into the inputs. So yeah, a lot of time when people are talking about linking SPs together, it really is that simple. It's just a cable between the two of them transferring audio. There's nothing fancy about hooking them up together. That is literally all you need to do. So with the external source lit, obviously you'd need that. I would record in what I'd recorded into this unit. And this could have been a bit of a waste of time. Maybe I could have used the effects on the Mark II instead to try and emulate the 202 sound, but there's just something about the 202's grit which I really like. So I'd record in that signal from the 202 and end up getting something like this. Now I can't play too much of this obviously because of a copyright, etc. Um, but I'll show you a little demo of what it sounded like. And hopefully you can just hear that kind of ring on it. And that's why it's called the poor man's SP1200. You get that kind of nice ring on the samples, which I absolutely love. And you know that it's not some kind of digital effect or anything like that. That is just purely because of the sample rate that you've used in the SP202. So that's how I was getting a lot of the grit on there. For the drums, and this is another announcement that I've got actually, I used all my own drums for this one. So all the drums in the tape are from either Lo-Fi Drums 1, 2 or 3. They're all mixed in together, so I don't know specifically which ones are used for which track. And I've got all those loaded up on the 404 Mark II. So all I have to do is shift and import. Import from SD card. Sample. SP vids, and you can see I've got all my packs in here, lo-fi drums 1, 2, 3, and 4, and hip-hop drums. They're all in there, and if you're watching this on release, 
I actually have a Valentine's sale on at the moment. It's 20% off all my drums. So if you could go to my store and pick something up, that would be very, very much appreciated. That offer is running until Sunday. So you've got the rest of the week if you want to pick up a pack. I would very, very much appreciate it because the shop has been very quiet for the last couple of months. So if you could head over and support me by picking up a pack, that would be very much appreciated. So yeah, on the tape, all the drums used are from those packs. And to be honest, the main thing I did with the drums is repitching the snares and the hi-hats actually repitching all of them just to help them sit in the uh in the in the beat a little bit better so let's see what pitching we've done here with the kick on this track i didn't actually do any pitching on that one as you can see it's at zero uh, for the snare i've done plus four so i've pitched it up four semitones i guess that is i'm not entirely sure but yeah plus four on there whatever that means and the hi-hat i've gone minus 10 so i was doing this a lot on this uh, tape, I was actually pitching down the hi-hats because it gives you a kind of fuller sound and it just kind of fills out the mix a little bit. So I was actually enjoying doing that. So yeah, here's a little sample of what the drums kind of sounded like on this one. And one of the great things about the Mark II, and I really enjoyed this for making this tape, is being able to have the two buses up here. So bus one and bus two. And I was able to send the pads to bus one and the drums to bus two, and therefore make a really nice mix. And in order to do that, you do have to have this set up in the effect settings in this way. So you go shift effect settings. You can see there, their series. So that means that they'll stack on top of each other. You have to push the dial to change that and then they run in parallel. I think that's the right way around I'm saying it. I think that's parallel now, isn't it? And then what I was doing for a lot of it is using isolator on the drums. So I think you should be able to see that some of these buttons are orange at the top and some of them are green at the bottom. They're the two different buses that they're going to. So on bus two, which is green, I've got isolator. And I was basically just taking some of the highs off just to make them sound a little bit warmer. can tell the difference there and it really does make a much nicer warmer texture if you just take some of those highs off this is with it off and with it on especially on the snare there it really does mellow that snare out nicely and uh, leave it with a very nice sound to it for the samples obviously because they've already got the treatment from the 202 i wasn't doing an awful lot with them on a couple of the tracks i used the 404 vinyl sim that's always been one of my favorite effects since getting the sx i really really like the uh, the flutter on that i wasn't using the noise or frequency so much it was more just about just adding that little bit of flutter on the samples uh, so if i go to bus one and add that on <laughs> And that's without. And with again. One of the effects I was using a lot as well was the warm saturator. Now this was more of a over the top of everything kind of effect. So if I look for a beat where I just had a loop. So for example here, this may not perfectly loop. I was quickly resampling these ideas just to remember what I wanted to do with this beat but I can show you how warm saturator makes a difference here, so... Let's just get this turned up a little bit. Okay, so if we put warm saturator on that, let's just make sure that's in orange, and yeah it is. And we've got warm saturator on bus one. So I was having drive on zero, drive just adds too much distortion, so I wasn't enjoying that on a full loop, so drive was on zero. The EQ lows, I was really boosting those up to try and get that warm sound out of it, and I was taking down the highs as well. So that's almost like an EQ, but it just has a lot more meat to it, and that really did make a difference to the beats. I felt that that really warmed them up a lot, especially considering as what I did at the end as well, which I'll get onto that in a sec. So... Warm saturator, that's one of my new favorite effects. And I believe, yes, I've actually changed the delay to be warm saturator now. Um, you can customize these buttons if you didn't know about that. You can choose your own effects now. And I've had that set to warm saturator just because I've been using that a lot recently. So thumbs up 
for the warm saturator, that's a great effect. In terms of the chopping, I actually went back to the kind of old school way of chopping and this, as I mentioned at the start of the video, is no slur on the Mark II as a unit. I just kind of missed the old style of chopping like it used to be done on the SX and so I thought I would see if you can actually still chop pretty quickly with this device without having to use auto chop or the actual chopping feature which you can see here and the answer is yes you can and it's actually pretty nice as a workflow so I'll just show you a quick example so we've got this here start and end and what you can do is just copy it and it's really quick you just hit copy choose the one you want and let's just put that on five confirm that and you can use the mark button to mark your samples but you have to be in start end otherwise it triggers the skip back function so you press start and end and there you go you can see I press the mark button and it's made a new mark and it's changed the start position and I've marked it here now instead and now you can see there I've managed to mark it and have two different places and you can just keep doing that you can just keep copying them and changing the start position you can either use mark inside start and end or obviously you can use the dials as well to really drill into that start point and get them nice and accurate so I was using that a lot I was using the zoom and the dials a lot to get really really accurate with that so yeah I didn't use the auto chop feature and yeah, I didn't feel a need that I really needed to use that. I think that workflow that I just showed you there is pretty quick. And a few of you have asked if you can still chop in the manual way. Well, there you go. You can pretty much do it just in that sort of format. Okay, so once I had my ideas ready, I went for my very lazy approach of making beats again, where pretty much what I do is record a drum loop. And then when I'm recording the beat, I'll just perform it live. Now, part of the reason that I do this is because I actually enjoy performing beats. I think it's quite fun and I think it's fun to record them live. It's pretty boring just getting everything into a pattern and then just playing it and recording it. I mean, there's no enjoyment in that for me. I like the performance side of doing beats. So I would tend to have a drum loop like this. And there you go, you can hear that's looping around perfectly. That would have the isolator on it like I previously showed you with the buses and then I would just jam along. And if you just imagine I was recording that then in an external unit, I was actually doing that into Ableton, you can understand hopefully how that works. I would just play that, I would jam and see what happens. So after I'd recorded all that stuff into Ableton, each track, I tracked them all out and got the pauses in where I wanted them, etc. I then used my tape deck to run all these beats through. Now I'll just do a few visuals of these. I can't be bothered trying to fit this into this the shot as well. It's tucked away under here. But yeah, once I was happy with all the recordings, I'd recorded them out, I got them to the sort of right length that I wanted. I then ran them all onto tape using my tape deck over there. And once I'd recorded those onto tape, I then recorded them back onto my laptop again into Ableton. And they had this like really nice warm quality to them and that natural tape noise that uh, I think just added another layer to the, to the tape, which made it a little bit better. But yeah, in future, I'm going to be running all my beats through that tape machine just because it just adds that little bit of authentic sound to it and uh, I just like the texture that it gives off. So I think that's everything covered. This has ended up being quite a long video, nearly 20 minutes by the looks of it. Hopefully it's a bit shorter when it's edited down. So if you're still watching at this point, thank you very much for tuning in. It's great to be back recording again, although this video was uh, pretty difficult to record. There was a lot of coughing going on <laughs> out, of, uh, out of shot. So hopefully I'll be back to full health soon because it's been over a week and I'm just getting really frustrated with it all now. So yeah, I'm good enough to do videos just about, so that's a good thing. Don't forget about the sale in my shop. I'll leave a link below to that. I will also leave a link below to the SoundCloud beat tape so you guys can go and have a listen. And if you have any other questions about this process, then please let me know. I'll leave it there, guys. Until next time, keep making beats. Please check out my tape. Please check out my sale. And I will be back very soon. Peace.